Hey, uh, let's talk about something from yesterday. We're not going to get deep down into that whole bank fiasco uh, like we did yesterday. If you want the details, just go listen to yesterday. It's a lot from yesterday. Uh, but I did want to mention one thing. And one of the really big narratives going around is that this deregulation is what caused this problem, this 2018 deregulation. Now, they did this also with that train derailment in Ohio. It's nice that you can kind of just blame everything on Trump, almost like there's a presidential election coming up mm. here in a bit, and, and Trump might be involved in it. Mm. I don't know. My uh, predecessor. Uh. This... This is sh I miss him. shaping up to be, I've got that somewhere. I got to find that. <laughs> Let me see. That's one of the best ones. <laughs> My predecessor. Oh, I miss him. Where is it? It's so good. We're taking this break to find it. Ah, there it is. I said it need to, needed to. <laughs> My predecessor. Oh God, I miss him. <laughs> That's a good one. It's so good. All right. So the pre uh, Biden's predecessor is what caused this. And it seems to be shaping up like that isn't the case. Just a little bit. I heard on CNBC this morning. I happened to turn on CNBC. And someone mentioned deregulation. And the guy cut in with, well, uh, they, they actually, it was this, this uh, bank policy institute released a study saying, actually, they, they still would have been fine under that regulation, too. It wouldn't have caught this problem at all. It mattered. And so the guy on CNBC cut in with that and said, well, actually, they just came out of the study saying that it would have been fine and that it wouldn't have stopped this. And so, of course, the person quickly moved on to something else. And so what that means is we're going to roll through a few article headlines here if you're watching the video, even from Forbes, how Trump's deregulation sowed the seeds for Silicon Valley banks' demise. Uh, this is another, another a 2018 banking law paved the way for Silicon Valley banks' collapse. I don't remember where that was from. Eric Swalwell talking about how Trump and McCarthy did this, posting a video from Midas Touch where they are showing Trump announcing this deregulation. Bernie Sanders put out a statement saying that this is a direct result of the deregulation bill signed by Donald Trump, a bipartisan bill, by the way. Um, this was from the New Republic, I think. Trump's rollback of Dodd-Frank regulations directly led to the Silicon Valley Bank failure. Um, Elizabeth Warren on New York Times, Silicon Valley Bank is gone. We know who's responsible. Um, hint, it was, it was Trump. Mm. Uh, that's what it was. Uh, Vanity Fair, the Silicon Valley Bank crisis is complicated, but Donald Trump's role in it isn't. And now all of these people, this is what I was worried about yesterday, was they were all talking about how this, there was deregulation. They did remove one of these things and the, they basically raised the threshold to 250 billion and Silicon Valley Bank, Bank was at 212 billion. And so they didn't get into that next category of scrutiny. And that was all anyone said, no one ever said. And that regulation that they were exempt from would have seen this and would have told them that they had to fix this and this thing would have, no one ever went so far as to say that. They simply said that the uh, threshold was moved up to 250 billion, and so Silicon Valley Bank was technically deregulated because of this law, and that was it. And then everyone just runs with this is Trump's fault. Obviously, if they still would have fit uh, in this regulation, the specific one, then this bank collapse wouldn't have happened. Well, and they also didn't mention. <clears throat> I'm surprised because there's uh, secret phone recordings of Trump on the phone with Silicon Valley Bank executives forcing them mm -hmm. to take risky ass positions yeah regardless of their fiduciary responsibility to their deposit and and uh, account holders trust That's me what, you're gonna want those 10 years yeah exactly <laughs> it's the best treasuries he made them buy those treasuries that's what that's mm -hmm. what really happened that's the whole thing about this too it's like you want to blame someone for causing this to happen as if they're the ones who forced the non-risk management people to do stupid things yeah um not remember a, as you said the guy who was the cfo of lehman brothers and the ceo of silicon valley bank and he rode the wave cashed out we'll probably start some other new venture and find a way to screw people out of money why and we've already said this it's not because trump deregulated anything it's because these guys don't have any backlash there's no 
There's no reason not to do it. It's zero risk. Might as well. Um, From the Bank Policy Institute, and I think this is who I heard CNBC mention earlier today, Silicon Valley Bank would have passed the liquidity coverage ratio requirement. So um, even if they weren't deregulated, even if this law, if this law had not passed, this bank still would have passed the liquidity ratio coverage ratio requirements. So they could have still applied with complied with all the regulations. Yes, nothing would have changed, and it still would have collapsed. And in fact, they say that it could have been worse <laughs> if they would have qualified under the regulation because they might have had more treasuries. So that, <laughs> and the treasuries were the thing that got devalued and the, and the, uh, the MBS, all that, that, that got devalued. They say, if anything, it could have been worse. Uh, but anyway, they say one result of the 2018 law tailoring regulation was to exempt banks under 250 billion from the liquidity coverage ratio or LCR. In the wake of the failure of Silicon Valley Bank, SVB, some bank critics have alleged that this relief was pro- the proximate cause of that failure. Of course, that raises a factual question that they have not addressed. And that is what I was mentioning yesterday. When you say that it is the cause of this failure, you are saying that this would have caught the problem at the bank and therefore it wouldn't have happened. But no one ever addressed that at all. Just like the thing with the train derailment, with the brakes. Well, this train actually if you would have never done anything, any deregulation, it still wouldn't have been required to have mm-hmm. those electronic brakes. So the, it's those like extra questions, like does this apply <laughs> to the conversation that we're having that people just can't ask anymore? Um, of course, that raises a fast question. Would SVB's problems have been caught by the LCR and would it have had the fund itself in a more sound way? The answer appears to be no. SVB probably would have received a passing score on the LCR. Moreover, SVB remains subject to the internal liquidity stress tests required by Regulation YY, which are better suited to address the liquidity situation SVB encountered, meaning they were still having to do internal liquidity stress tests under a different regulation that they are still required to do. Like they had to do it, and that's what... And passed them. And they passed it, and that is the stress test that actually looks for the thing that happened. Okay, this whole... Bank deregulation thing is a it's still got the rubber stamp. Yeah. What do you call it? Red herring? Is that the name of the? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know all my argument flags, yeah. my, my fallacy flags, and yeah. stuff like that. Maybe that's what it is. Someone in the live group can tell me. It's the smoking chicken. <laughs> that's what I think. It it's is. the smoking chicken. I yeah. like that. Yeah, that result should not be surprising, uh, given that the underlying cause of SVB's failure, which is interest rate risk. Its problem was not that it did not hold liquid securities like treasuries and agency guaranteed mortgage-backed securities. Its problem was that those securities were long-term and paid low interest rates and thus suffered extraordinary losses when the rates rose. That's not a problem that the LCR, which was eventually uh, exempt from, is designed to catch. <laughs> the, the, internal, <laughs> the internal liquidity stress test is what is designed to catch that, which is what they still have to do. The LCR the liquidity coverage ratio is not designed to catch this problem because these treasuries, these imbi- these mortgage-backed securities are considered to be very safe. and They don't move that much. And also, guys, this is just further example that it's technically impossible to think of all the very varying different scenarios of what could happen in a financial situation or anything like that. This is why central planning is... Everyone looks to the government like, oh, you should have kept us safe. It's like there's no way for them to, to account for all the different scenarios that could take place for a bank failure. It's impossible. Especially not the government. And Until what it, it happens, and now they can include a, a new rule, mm. and a new regulation to prevent this thing from happening. But what if something else happens? That means that, it's, by the <laughs> way, for this regulation, they're going to have to tell the banks that their own treasury – the own the own treasuries and the mortgage backed securities and US treasuries are not safe enough for them to keep a large portion of and they're not going to tell them that they they can't because they require on people buying those bonds to keep funding our debt or deficit spending mm-hmm. and they're not going to tell them that those aren't the safest thing in the entire world for them to buy so i, I don't i don't know what they're going to do here um i want to try and get 
I got to make a note. We had someone on the show before, or I did, a time that Charlie was gone that used to work for the Fed and then also worked uh, at banks doing stress tests for banks. Seems like a good person to talk to about this, right? Yeah. That would be, yeah. I think that's that a person be, to talk to. That would be someone who probably knows the ins and outs. Charlie, do you know what day it is? Is it International Women's Day? It is Equal Pay Day. Oh. Yes. Equal Pay Day. What does this day mean to you? We're not going way into I'm it like we like normally do. Jeremy Boring. I love an international woman. <laughs> that was a pretty <laughs> funny part. It was. About that. Yeah. All right. Now, there's no article here. I just want to talk about the fact that this is a completely made up thing and I will not give into it. And if any women want to talk to me about it, I will tell you that you are living a lie and you're wrong. Okay. And if you want to feel bad about something that doesn't exist, then that's on you. It's, you're but welcome. I'm not going to be brought into it. You're welcome to feel that way. That's fine. <laughs> Whatever. Women have to work nearly 15 months to earn what a man earns in 12. And that's been true for decades. Oh, from NPR, a very neutral, you know, site. Yeah. There's a so. couple other things. I renamed it on Twitter um, to Equal Productivity Day. This is the day in the year that women have to work to to be as productive as a man was in 2022. <laughs> Let's just yeah. call it like it is, on average. Yeah. No. <laughs> Taking all jobs into account. And some women completely outwork some men. That's yeah, true, too. Clearly. Yeah. You know? But it's just... Also... It, I see your other note here, yeah. which is very important. What is a woman? Mm. Yeah. It's a very, it's a weird day because it's one of, now we have several, is, is it also like women's, is it still women's history month or something like that? Is that a thing or women's suffrage month or what? A, I don't know what, what it is. I think it's something like that. Um, it's Women's History Month. Women, women's yeah. History Month. Right and, after Black History, we go to Women's History. Yeah. yeah. It's a weird month out of the year where you're supposed oh, to pretend. March 8th was International Women's Day. Mm. Missed it. Dang it. <laughs> well, was, was I supposed to get my wife something for that day? Well, this is how many days past it that w men decide to acknowledge that it exists. Yeah. Okay. It's an un yeah. unequal thing. Mm -hmm. Um. This is that weird time of the year where we're supposed to pretend like we all know what a woman is. Mm. And everyone can say it, like the administration can say it, and the news can say it, and they can all say Women's Day, and they can talk about women being unpaid as compared to men and all that. And they can all just talk normally about this gender pay gap as if there day. are genders. <laughs> and everyone just talks like they did eight years ago, like nothing ever happened. Okay. And you know why? Because they all know that they are lying all the other days about all the gender shit. And so it's very easy on this day for them to talk about this. Mm -hmm. And then the next day going back to, yeah, yeah. No, th no such thing as genders or gender fluidity. Exactly. Yeah. There's a couple other things. Nina. Oh, Nina. All right. Women make 83 cents for every dollar a man makes. It's time we got our whole damn dollar. For black women, the gap is 67 cents for every dollar. Mm. Both lies. Just, no, it's not true. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to. We've got, we've probably done, what, about eight episodes about this by now, mm -hmm. I would say. Should have just released some of that. In fact, it's the opposite, by the <laughs> way. Is. In the studies where the woman and the man have the same experience, same degree, same everything. Same consistent time. Same time work. On the all job. All of that, the woman actually makes more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same education, same time on the job. If you could see- The in, woman makes more. In science, and I know this even because my wife is doing an experiment with my son. Mm-hmm. Right? They're growing plants, little seedlings, and she's helping Parker keep a science journal. I think it's cool. He's like learning. weed plants? No. It looks like we have grow lights though. So if you look, drive past our house, it looks mm. like we're, but anyway, she's, you know, teaching him about science. It's a really cool way. And he's excited to learn and it helps him write and stuff, which is good. And, uh, the last night they were going over in a science experiment. You have to account for variables. Mm. 
That's variables. a very important thing, apparently, in science. You account for variability, which means everybody should know what that means. Yeah. That there can be changing pieces that could affect the hypothesis that women make less than men. I got you. Yeah. So once you account, once you account for all the variables, women actually make more. So <laughs> it's time we got our whole yeah, damn dollar. I'm, I'm sick of this. I'm, I'm going on strike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of being so much more I'm productive. Wear a penis on my head. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make penis hats. Penis hats. And okay. Go marching in Washington D.C. Um, Biden posted something about this as well. This is a note, a totally real note for sure that he got from a kid that totally for sure sent him this note about equal pay for women. And if it, by the way, I'm more upset if it is a real note because just. You know what? You can indoctrinate your kids however you want. I already took that policy stance last weekend. But to, for your little kid who has terrible handwriting, can't spell shit yet, um, you shouldn't ha be talking to them about how women don't make as much as men. Let me read like, the note. What a stupid thing to yeah. be talking to your kid about. Let me, re let me read for you. Uh, yeah, imagine being like, hey, Charlotte, no matter how hard you work... <laughs> doesn't matter this, what education level. It doesn't matter what you do. <laughs> I just want you to know you're never going to be as good as a man. So, And that's why I still we're want gonna, you to try. That's why we're going to start giving you testosterone, honey. <laughs> okay? We're going to so, start. <laughs> little Miss Charlotte, I'm sure she's a cute kid. She wrote, Dear President Biden, I just wanted to tell something not fair to ladies. Now, what is a lady? We are not sure, but... Well, there, you can see that they fair. already had to erase that and put mm -hmm. something else in that spot, so she no She continues telling. on, men are getting more money than girls. I think you should... Which, by the way, men should make more money than girls. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. That's true. I think Men are generally you, more productive than uh, child laborers than yeah. a female. I think you should fix this since you're the... Precedent. Pres president. Mm -hmm. He's in a tent. Yep. Yeah. Even I'm a child and I think we should do something from Charlotte. We got to do something. Honestly, that's a great endorsement of how stupid this argument is because mm -hmm. this kid thinks it's a real thing. And so if you want to be on the same philosophical, educational, factual level, as this dumbass kid, <laughs> then go ahead and make this argument. That's fine. That's up to you. So, of course, Biden responds on Twitter, posts a picture of it, and says, Charlotte, I couldn't agree more. Women lose thousands it's of stolen. dollars each year and hundreds of thousands over a lifetime because of gender and racial wage gaps. I'm, co I'm committed to building an economy where my daughters have the same rights and opportunities mm. as my son. Does Charlotte have Twitter? They do. Yeah. They already do. Actually, it's... It's more. It's more. Yes. You know, like, I understand people who look like me and Charlie, you probably think we run the world, but the problem is we used to, okay? That was our dad's gift, okay? These days, it's not, it's not the thing. Charlotte, I got to tell you what, the fact that you're a girl or that you've decided to be a girl, or who the hell knows what's going on. She's too young for us to know that anyway. Um, that's going to help you out. That's going to give you a leg up. And I mean, praise God if you happen to be black and gay, you could be the White House press secretary and be terrible. It doesn't even matter. You can have whatever job you want, basically. That's right. But to still sit here and pretend like that's not the case, mm -mm, I'm over it. I ain't going to do it. Done for. I don't mean the kid's actually done, by the way. The kid's a kid, all right? Kids, they have the intelligence level of a kid. Kids are inherently ignorant. And ignorant doesn't mean you're stupid. It means that you don't know. It means you're uneducated on a specific thing. Kids are just inherently ignorant about things. And if you want to go ahead and line up yourself, align with even what this child thinks. If it is a child. Then that is how informed your 
position is on on the matter on equal pay yep so there there you go it's like and look i definitely want you know women to make money and to for it to be fair and i think that there are extremely rare instances that people uh let's say are sexist yeah yeah I'm, I'm not saying that you haven't that you might not have a personal story about how someone was sexist against you i'm sure that may be the case but when you look at at the whole, it's like women entered the workforce and the workforce is very competitive, right? Everybody wants to make the most amount of po- the most amount of money possible for the least amount of work. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, how can I make as much money as I possibly can from this company while making sure they're going to keep me employed and then also I have to work the least amount possible so that I can do the other things that I want to do. So the, the light, the labor market's extremely competitive, right? You have all kinds of people who are willing to do the same job and work harder for less money. So now you've got to be like, okay, am I okay with less money, whatever. And women have to compete with men in the workforce. And so now they just are like, well, we don't want to have to do, you know, as hard a work Mm. for that competition. Let's get, let's be smart about this. I don't blame them by the way. Let's be smart about this. Get people behind us to where we can make more money. Than I, men. It is Pretend smart. You're right. And gaslight folks into think that we don't. The smart way to do it yeah. is uh, by complaining about a problem that doesn't actually exist. Yeah. There you go. Oh, I want to mention, by the way, Charlie and I are going to be hanging out at this, uh, this Take Human Action Tour. Uh, which is going to be not just coming through Nashville, but also coming through Nashville. We're going to be going to some other places. Um, the one that's going through Nashville, by the way, well, before that, they're going to be doing one in New York. That's the weekend of April 1st. That's coming up. Then there's one in Chicago, Chicago, uh, April 15th. What a tyrannical places the first couple times there. Yeah. And then Nashville, April 22nd. We're going to go hang out out there. Uh, there's Michael Bolden, 10th Amendment Center, going to be out there. Um, Jeff, Jeff Deist. Yeah. And uh, Clint Russell from Liberty Lockdown is going to be debating Destiny, um, who is a gamer bro. Twitch streamer. Who thinks he knows things. And he's very confident about the fact that he thinks he knows things. Mm-hmm. And so that should be a pretty exciting thing. He has a large following. <clears throat> he does have a large following, as a lot of douchebags do. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a strategy. Yeah. You know, that's mm-hmm. fine. So April 22nd, if you want to come hang out in Nashville, well, it's actually in, uh, where was it? Cool Springs? In Cool Springs, yeah. Yeah. I believe it's at, uh, let's see. Uh, he told me, but I can't remember. Was that like a Holiday Inn or something? I can't remember. Yeah. Something like that. Marriott but, Holiday Inn. Uh, you can go like to TakeHumanActionTour.com and check that out if you want to. Then there's one in Austin, Texas the next weekend. It's got Maj Jure, Scott Horton, Clint Russell, all that. Someday, um, we're, we'll be big enough that our names will be on something like that. You know, <laughs> Instead, before that, we're just going to set up a table where the real people are inside talking. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, mm-hmm. That's going to be the thing. Okay, there's that. All right, from CNN. This sent the market down for a little bit, but then it just rallied right back up as if nothing had happened. Unlike this drone. Yeah. All right. (laughs) A Russian fighter jet forces down U.S. drone Mm. over Black Sea after intercept. So it's it's so funny that they didn't like shoot it down. They didn't. They couldn't do that. There must be rules. Yeah. I guess there's you can't shoot it down. A Russian fighter jet forced down a U.S. Air Force drone over the Black Sea on Tuesday after damaging the propeller of the American MQ-9 Reaper drone, according to a U.S. official familiar with the incident. The Reaper drone and two Su-27 flanker jets were operating over international waters over the Black Sea when one of the Russian jets intentionally flew in front of and dumped fuel in front of the unmanned drone, according to the official. Was there a woman in the drone? One of the jets then damaged the propeller of the Reaper, which is mounted on the rear of the drone, the official said. The damage to the propeller forced the U.S. to bring down the Reaper in international waters in the Black Sea. The U.S. Air Force issued a statement accusing the Russian aircraft of acting in a, quote, reckless, environmentally unsound, and unprofessional manner. (laughs) It was 
It's also churlish. Insubordinate <laughs> and churlish. Yeah. I first off. Now I want to know. Did that plane, did the Russian plane have missiles on it? And if it did, do they just not work? So it just it peed on it? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> it's like a bird. It's like going over you. I'm trying to. <laughs> took, um, missiles won't launch, sir. <laughs> What's next up? Backup plan. What's my backup plan? Pee on it. No, I guarantee you it's because if they shot it down, that would be like an act of war. Oh, oh. But you, you know what's not an, on things. You know what's not an act of war? See, they got to be careful here. The U.S. Air Force, very concerned about professionalism in the war place. (laughs) And they want to make sure that you're not doing anything reckless. And they want to harm the environment. Do not, do not (laughs) harm the environment. And that was the thing that they, I mean, very, very upset about is the unprofessional, environmentally dangerous nature of this. Blowing your load of fuel in the sky. Mm -hmm. Not good environmentally unsound it's not good for the fish when the fuel falls down into the uh, to the ocean it's not good for the gnats not good for the flying anything around. through there probably it got soaked up in some clouds and it's raining over ohio somewhere right now i bet that's next, what's going on next to east palestine yeah yeah and um what was the other th- oh they probably didn't shoot it down because that would be like an act of war and you don't want to do that you know, it's not an act of war spending like over a hundred billion dollars giving another country weapons to fight you. To fight you. Yeah. In a war. Mm-hmm. That's not an act of war. Right. So hey, while it might have been insubordinate and churlish, I actually think there was, they practice great restraint in the manner. Yeah. And creativity, honestly. You bring up a really good point, which mm-hmm. I know we've talked about, but imagine like imagine that you funded some other guy like to kill your wife. Mm-hmm. It's like, would that be in like an act of murder? I mean, that you? literally is. <laughs> no, no, no. We're not, fi- we're not fighting you. No, no, it's not us. No, we're just, sir. I didn't kill my wife. <laughs> okay. That guy killed my wife. It, I gave him all the money. I gave him a lot of money to yeah. go do it. Yeah. But, but I didn't kill my wife. You see, that doesn't stand up in court. It does stand up in war court, though. It's so fine. ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Oh, we're just living in fake It's land. all just... It's Fugazi, you know? Yeah. This is all just... <laughs> these Don't days, we... reading the news is like listening to Top 40 radio. Like, it's all just bullshit. No one cares. The person singing didn't write the shit. It's probably AI in the first place. It's... You know, <laughs> It's, we, we're reaching the age of we don't know what's real anymore, which means the postmodernists have won, by the way. <laughs> they are winning. Yeah, they're winning. We don't know what war is anymore. We don't know what a woman is. We don't know how the pay gap got here. And that's the point. It's chaos. It's, yeah. That You have to put everyone in chaos. There can't be any objective truth. It all has to be subjective. And then that that only helps the people that are that are in power. All the other people just run around like chickens with their feet cut off. Biden today to sign a new executive order to require background checks on more gun sales along with a bunch of other stuff. Um, Let me ask you a question, Nate. Yeah. Have you ever purchased a weapon? Like you physically purchasing a weapon without yes. a background check? No. <laughs> no, I've never been to a gun show. Me neither. No. Um. This even, is, even my raffle rifle that I won had to be <laughs> sent to an FFL dealer to run a background check on me, even though that guy's already ran a background check on me. Mm. He had to run another one. Same guy? Same guy. To, so I could get that rifle. Which, by the way, I haven't shot yet. We should go. I mean, I lost it, but we should go find it and shoot it sometime. Once we, yeah, we get it up out of it's the lake. Like, like a year. So Biden, I'm sure he might have done it by now. I don't know. I looked at this earlier. And sign a new executive order. Um, Biden is set to sign the order during a trip to Monterey Park, California, where he met with the families and the community impacted by the mass shooting that killed 11 and nine others in January. You remember that uh, injured nine others in January? Remember that shooting, Charlie, like the Chinese New Year party or something like that? That whole thing is pretty important to the story right now. Mm, yeah. This back, this thing he signed him would not have affected this shooting whatsoever. 
Oh, kind of like the regulations in the bank. Yeah. Hmm. So I, I just wanted to make that point right quick before we go through that he's doing this symbolic trip to California uh, and the shooting where he's meeting with the families would not have been prevented by any of the executive or the things in the executive order. So once again, another fake thing that's happening at the moment uh, was a legally purchased gun that the guy had who can tran was his name. Mm. <clears throat> Old dude killed all those people. Now the order will also improve, uh, will improve public awareness and increase the use of extreme protection, like red flag laws and safe storage of firearms. It, it will improve public awareness. Uh, Biden's directing his cabinet to encourage the effective use of red flag laws by partnering with law enforcement, health care providers, educators, and other community leaders. You know what helps dangerous people seek out medical attention is when you tell them that their health care provider is going to make sure they can't have a gun anymore. <laughs> You'll still totally go. Yeah, you'll get those farmers Talk. in the ER then. Mm -hmm. The order will also direct the Secretary of Transportation, who's great, <laughs> in consultation with the Department of Justice, which is completely unbiased, to work to, quote, reduce the loss or theft of firearms during shipment and to improve the reporting of such losses or thefts by engaging with shippers. The White House said the other the order will also hold the gun industry accountable by providing public and policymakers with more information regarding federally licensed firearms dealers who are violating the law. It directs the attorney general to publicly release ATF records from the inspection of firearms dealers cited for violation of federal firearm laws. The order requires the Department of Defense to develop and implement principles to further firearm and public safety practices through DOD acquisition of firearms right after they clean up their accounting. That's yeah. That's the DOD doing uh doing gun buybacks basically. Um and part of your unshakable defense budget by the way, Republicans. Uh Biden's order would also help catch shooters by accelerating federal law enforcement's reporting of ballistics data. The White House said the president will also encourage the Federal Trade Commission to issue a public report analyzing how gun manufacturers market firearms to minors. Mm. In addition, the measure enhances background oh, is that checks. All? That's the only agencies? Yeah. <laughs> this? Not the Department of Education. I mean, I feel like they're... They're not going far enough. They need to educate. <laughs> There's a reason. Charlie's referencing the fact that I... Uh, bolded and underlined all the agencies involved in this <laughs> in this executive order. The Transportation, Justice Department, ATF, Department of Defense, Federal Trade Commission. <laughs> Want to make sure those firearms say explicit on, yep. when you buy them. <laughs> <laughs> Got to do that. Warning, this yeah. firearm is, might cause, cause death. <laughs> In addition, uh, the measure enhances background checks for gun buyers under 21, adds penalties for some gun criminals, and provides funding for a variety of health and mental health-related programs. With regard to working with Congress on gun control legislation, a senior administration official said, quote, I think when you do gun violence policy, you always have to have hope. And I think there always is hope. I left that quote in there because that's all there is when it comes to all these things, because there's numerous studies showing that not one of those things does anything. Yeah, but you can hope. Listen, like the majority, at first off, we've got the suicides. We don't even have to go into all the gun deaths and all that, but you got suicides, which are massive portion of the gun deaths, like half of them, okay? And then you got the other massive portion, which are just career criminals who give... How many shits do you think they give about these laws? Mm, I don't even think they have a law book. They don't care. They don't even look it up. They're, they haven't updated their law back in a long, since like the 20s. Yeah. The 1920s, not yeah. the 2020s. That's right now. I don't even think they look up, like, is this breaking the law? You know? I don't think they, yeah. That's what, you should mandate that a gang in Chicago has to have um compliance officer 
what they do is ranks. they <laughs> they listen in on all the phone calls and all the text messages. They read all those. It's got, all got to go through compliance yep. to make sure that you stay in compliance with whatever the newest uh, federal yep. statute is. I think that's a problem that we've had. Yeah. Like, oh no, boss, boss, you can't do that. <laughs> What'd you say to me? Uh, I'm sorry, boss. He just pops in. You know, it's they're always listening. You know, compliance is always monitoring your phone calls. So it just kind of pops in there. Oh, uh, we already talked about this in the pre-show, so we're not going to talk about Hey, and if uh, you missed it, here. you might want to go sign yeah. up. Join gmail.com. It was fun. I'm going to get the... Did, see what I did there? I'm going to cut the video, and I'm going to put it in the Discord group so people who weren't here at that time can go back and watch it, because I think it was a fun conversation. It was fun. We got more stuff here for later on, but I don't think we have time to get into trans healthcare right now, mm. do we? I, I don't. I know I you're just itching to talk about it because you just want to. I keep thinking today's Wednesday. <laughs> no, I was I was no. thinking about are there any white pills, but it's today's not it's Wednesday. It's currently Tuesday. So we don't have to think about any white pills. We can just be, keep being pessimistic. That's that's all we need to do. That's good. Mm -hmm. I, my days are messed up right now. Same. It's been weird. A weird time. It has been strange. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Yeah, we don't have time to go into trans care currently. Yeah. Or the culture war, let's say. Um, but, you know, this is to all the ladies out there. Um, I hope on this day that you feel equally productive. Yeah. On this. Thank you for catching up. Yeah. That's what I have to say. I like, interestingly, too, how they worded it. That women have to work 15 months to match a man's 12. Yeah. You know, that three months there is very important, right? Because you have to work three months out of the year for free for the government, by the way. People have been doing this uh, lately. They, they started doing it with um, Medicare. They're saying like rich people only have to pay into Medicare for the first five days of the year. And then they don't pay in the Medicare for the rest of the year, you know, in relation to what they end up making. I'm like, really? You guys want to go down this road? How many days everyone works for free? You know, just to, just to fund whatever the hell it is you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. I don't think people want to start that conversation, but they're starting to do that now. Instead of just saying you pay a small percentage of all the money that you make, they're saying, well, after the first five days of the year, you don't pay anything towards Medicare. A billionaire, the first... 10 minutes of the day, they're done paying for Medicare for the rest of the year. And that's the way that they're going to frame this conversation, though. But they still work for the first, you know, three months for free. Yeah. And if you want to line out, here's what we got to do. We got to list out every single thing that your tax money goes towards. And we got to, you know, like, okay, well, I just got done paying for Medicare for the entire year. What am I paying for right now? Well, for the next 10 minutes, I'm going to pay for uh, Ukraine. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> next, that's the next. And after three months of doing that, People like us, you finally get to start working for yourself. Finally. Yeah, well, let's do it. Take it. Take your own into account. What do you think of my hats? It's nice. Yeah. I will say, I've said this before, but women could <laughs> fix women's issues, by yeah. the way. I don't know if you know this or not, but March Madness kicks off tonight with the play-in games. And uh, when I first went mm. to look at my bracket, I just clicked on like the first article on Google, and it was the women's March Madness. Uh, I was like, why is this the number one result? <laughs> no, people aren't looking up women's no, brackets. No. Okay. <laughs> so Google's like finagling it in women's month here to be the first result. Finagling. That's yeah. what you call that. Exactly. <laughs> to be the first result. Nothing against women's basketball. If you guys were better at it, we'd probably watch it. Yeah. If it was more fun to watch, was, I would definitely watch it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. But, but there's nothing I can do about that. You don't even need men to watch women's basketball. Mm -mm. You just need women to watch women. And I love Bill Burr's mm. point on this. Women could fix women's sports. Yeah. You just have to watch them and show up to the games. But they won't because it sucks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're not going. They're just going to watch men's sports. Even then, they could still show up to the game and have a hot dog and like all their girlfriends can sit. Just like, to patronize the role. Yeah. And they don't have to watch the game. They can just talk to each other the whole time, you know? They can turn book club night into let's go to a game <laughs> night. And then and they fix this whole thing. Yeah. By themselves. They would out earn the men fa fairly, by the way, because they would have ticket sales. They would have TV endorsements. They would have the money would be piling in for the women. Mm -hmm. It'd be so easy. Women, 
if you want to take over. It's, the, the, the blueprint is there. The men showed you how to do it. <laughs> it's just like if all of the people that listen to this podcast would go and retweet whatever random thing I tweet is today or leave a rating and review, something like that. We could shoot to the top of iTunes charts next week. Mm -hmm. But the you problem know? is we have... They're not going to. We have a download gap. There is a, there is a download a gap. Cast download gap, and I can't believe that that we aren't talking about it more. We have an equal listeners gap between us and Dave Smith right now. Uh, that's clearly only because Jews run the world. That's <laughs> and that's really all it is. Yeah. Okay. Jews it's a wonder. Get more downloads on average. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Ben Shapiro. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, yep. I can't name all. I don't have like a list of Jews. I heard that's a bad thing. <laughs> Dennis Prager. To have. Yeah, very popular. Yeah, that guy got real popular. Is he Jewish? Yeah. Is he? Yeah, of course he is. Okay. You don't listen to him talk about... Is he sound Jewish? Torah? <laughs> oh, okay, I got you. Yeah. I thought maybe he's just really knowledgeable in Judaism. No, he's a Jew. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is this conversation okay? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Have Is there anyone that we haven't offended yet? I love Jews. Me too. Yeah. I don't have nothing against them whatsoever. Yeah. At all. All right, let's go home. Do you did you want to offend anyone else? Are we good? I don't know if that was offensive. Was that offensive? Only for bitches. <laughs> and you know what? Yeah. They're welcome to feel that way. That's fine. That's right. All right, y'all, if you enjoyed today's show, please share it with a friend, a family member, or a foe. Even if you shared it before, share it again. Come on, we need your help. We gotta catch up. All right, go to joingml.com to be part of the Fed Haters Club. If you hate the feds, then you want to be in this club. It's a whole group of people who hate feds. And so if you don't join, obviously you love the feds. Mm -hmm. So I thought that there were more people who hated feds, honestly. I did too. But we're giving you a chance right now. Join gml.com. Nate and I are in the club. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fed Haters Club. Join gml.com. Go to natescrashcourse.com to learn about the market. Natescrashcourse.com. He's got... Thousands of minutes of videos out there, I think. At least thousands of minutes. Possible. Yeah. Yeah. Hundreds like of that. hours. No. no. It can't be hundreds of hours. Tens of hours. Yeah. Hundreds of minutes, if not thousands of minutes of videos. Yeah. Of education. Nate'sCrashCourse.com. And then also leave us a rating and review. Hit that smash. Hit that smash. Smash that hit button. <laughs> And if you do all of that, we'll be back again tomorrow. I hope you have a good day and a good morning. Liberty. The best way to get something done, if you, if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to, anyway, I'm, we're going to get a lot done. And